we are doing physics chapter 7 sound and this is the second part part b natural damped and forced vibrations and resonance so very interesting and new topics are to be discussed in this particular part of the chapter uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you're going to like this part this is uh, really interesting first natural vibrations a body clamped at one point clamped means fixed when disturbed slightly from its rest position starts vibrating the vibrations so produced are called the natural or free vibrations of the body the period or frequency time period or frequency of vibration depends on the shape and size or structure of the body the time period of the body is called its natural period and the frequency is called its natural frequency each body capable of vibrating vibrates with a constant natural frequency and its amplitude of vibration remains constant to ye jo pura natural vibration ka process ye log explain kar rahe hain please understand that ye ideal condition ki baat kar rahe hain natural vibrations sirf ideal conditions mein hi possible hai natural vibrations is an ideal case for any vibrating body kyun ye ideal case hai ideal case matlab practical case nahi hota hai remember that ideal case is a special case so why is this natural vibration treated as a special case an ideal case see number one reason is uh the time period and frequency remains uh time period not time period and frequency yeah time period frequency and amplitude time period frequency and amplitude of vibration remains constant throughout the vibration throughout the whole process whole vibration period aise bhi bol sakte hain which is really a difficult thing इन प्रैक्टिकल सिचुएशन दिस इज नेवर पॉसिबल कोई भी बॉडी इनफाइनाइट टाइम के लिए सेम टाइम पीरियड सेम फ्रीक्वेंसी और सेम एम्पलीट्यूड से वाइब्रेट नहीं कर सकता ठीक है तो नेचुरल वाइब्रेशन आइडियल केस है कोई भी बॉडी जब अपनी नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी और नेचुरल टाइम पीरियड के साथ एक कॉन्स्टेंट एम्पलीट्यूड के साथ वाइब्रेट करेगा तो उस वाइब्रेशंस को उसके नेचुरल वाइब्रेशंस बोलेंगे देखो नेचुरल वाइब्रेशन कहां हो सकते हैं ये भी बताए लोग ने द नेचुरल वाइब्रेशंस ऑफ अ बॉडी अकर ओनली इन वैक्यूम बिकॉज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ मीडियम अराउंड द बॉडी ऑफर सम रेजिस्टेंस ड्यू टू विच द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ वाइब्रेशन डज नॉट रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट बट इट कॉन्स्टेंटली डिक्रीजेस सो पीरियोडिक वाइब्रेशन ऑफ अ बॉडी इन एबसेंस ऑफ एनी एक्सटर्नल फोर्स ऑन इट आर कॉल्ड द नेचुरल और फ्री वाइब्रेशन ठीक है तो और एक बात समझ में आ गई है कि नेचुरल वाइब्रेशन इज एन आइडियल केस फॉर एनी वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी द फर्स्ट रीजन बीइंग बिकॉज इट्स टाइम पीरियड फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड एम्पलीट्यूड रिमेन्स कांस्टेंट थ्रू आउट द होल वाइब्रेशन पीरियड एंड इट अकर्स इट कैन अकर ओनली इन द एबसेंस ऑफ एनी absence of any medium around it around the body matlab vacuum mein if it can occur only in the absence of any medium around the body that is only in vacuum it's very difficult to achieve this natural vibration in uh, realistic situations because 
to achieve perfect vacuum in realistic situations and to create uh, vibrations in a body inside that uh, perfect vacuum it is uh, slightly difficult so natural vibrations are a theoretical concepts okay examples of natural vibrations now see these examples are very important they these all examples which occur around us uh, are you know are cited as examples of natural or free, free vibrations assuming that the vibrations are taking place in the absence of any medium around the body around the vibrating body that means assuming that body is is kept inside vacuum and uh, then if this body is going to vibrate uh, it its vibrations are going to be called as natural vibrations sabse pehle bob of simple pendulum agar simple pendulum ke bob ko slightly displace karenge bob of simple pendulum ko hum log slightly displace karenge apni mean position se to aur chhod denge theek hai to it starts vibrating with its natural frequency which is determined by the length of the pendulum and the acceleration due to gravity g at that place and it is given by f is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root of g by l theek hai to ye jo एग्जाम्पल है ये 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 जो फ्रीक्वेंसी है दैट इज द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ वाइब्रेशन फॉर अ बॉब ऑफ अ सिंपल पेंडुलम बट ये रियलिस्टिक सिचुएशन में अचीव नहीं हो सकता ये सिर्फ हाइपोथेटिकल या फिर आइडियल सिचुएशन में ही अचीव हो सकता है जहां पे कोई रेजिस्टिंग मीडियम नहीं है एयर नहीं है या दो कोई दूसरा मीडियम नहीं है उसके अराउंड मतलब वैक्यूम ठीक है तो वैक्यूम में अगर किसी बॉब को मैंने डिस्प्लेस किया अपनी मेन पोजीशन से सो इट विल इट विल बी वाइब्रेटिंग विद दिस नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी व्हिच डायरेक्टली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द लेंथ ऑफ द पेंडुलम एंड एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी एट दैट प्लेस तो ये जो फ्री ये जो फार्मूला है तुम्हें लर्न करना पड़ेगा ये फार्मूला तुमने डिराइव भी किया हुआ है क्लास नाइन्थ में बट ये तुम्हें अभी लर्न करना पड़ेगा डिफरेंट पेंडुलम्स having different lengths will vibrate with different frequencies that is they will have different natural frequencies a simple pendulum of length 1 meter on earth's surface where acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square has its natural frequency 0.5 hertz isko kya bolte hai pata hai seconds pendulum hai na because its time period is 1 second because it takes uh 1 second to complete one full vibration theek okay? hai So, ये हो गया तुम्हारा पेंडुलम का फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल सिंपल पेंडुलम का अब मैं ये जितने भी एग्जाम्पल्स यहां पे सेवन एग्जाम्पल्स है आई थिंक यस सेवन एग्जाम्पल्स है टोटल मैं सारे एग्जाम्पल में रिपीट बार बार नहीं करूंगा कि ये सिर्फ वैक्यूम में पॉसिबल है ये सिर्फ वैक्यूम में पॉसिबल है अब ये तुम्हें अपने अंदर डाल देना है दिमाग में कि नेचुरल वाइब्रेशन एक हाइपोथेटिकल या फिर एक अजम्पन बेस्ड फिनोमिना है ठीक है विच इज यू कैन से एन आइडियल सिचुएशन इट इज पॉसिबल ओनली इन आइडियल सिचुएशन वेयर देर इज नो रिमेंबर यहां पे मैंने बोला था वेयर देर इज नो प्रेजेंस ऑफ एनी मीडियम अराउंड द बॉडी नो मीडियम इज प्रेजेंट अराउंड द बॉडी दैट इज दैर इज देर इज ओनली वैक्यूम सो देर इज नो रेजिस्टेंस ड्यू टू विच द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ द वाइब्रेशन विल चेंज राइट in natural vibrations the amplitude of vibration does not change because there is no resistance theek hai to ye sirf absence of medium mein ya vacuum mein hi possible hai ye jitne bhi example ye first example maine diya maine bataya isme ki this is possible only in vacuum aage jitne bhi examples hai main tumhe examples explain karunga but i am not going to again and again repeat that these are uh, ideal conditions ideal cases okay chalo next next example of natural vibrations a load suspended from a spring when stretched or compressed and then released starts vibrating with its natural frequency its frequency is determined by the hardness or uh, hardness of the spring that is force constant spring constant bhi bolte hai usko k and mass of the load to do cheeze hain which determines the uh, frequency of the vibrating body which is attached with a string a spring 
mass of the body which is attached with the spring and the spring constant or force constant or hardness of the spring and this frequency is given by 1 upon 2 pi under root of k by m which is very much similar to our uh, example of simple, simple pendulum frequency of simple pendulum sirf yahan pe g by l hai yahan pe hamare paas aa gaya hai k by m g by l ki jagah pe k by m the frequency will be different for the same load on different springs and it will be different for different loads on the same spring to spring ki hardness pe depend karti hai kitni frequency se wo load vibrate karega jab usko disturb karenge aur mass pe depend karega wo load ka mass kya hai when a tuning fork you all know what is a tuning fork tuning fork is a i will show you the picture wait because i am I'm, i'm sure that uh, you might have this uh, doubt about what is what tuning fork so i can show you the picture right away see this is a tuning fork alag alag sizes shapes uh key tuning forks mil rahi hai each different size and shape of tuning fork has got different frequencies has got different frequencies right okay so tuning fork when this tuning fork is struck against a hard rubber pad it starts vibrating with its natural frequency it start vibrate it starts vibrating with its natural frequency the vibrations from longitudinal waves in air which when reach our ears sound is heard this sound is of a single frequency that is it is a pure note so tuning fork remember it is not a musical instrument tuning fork is generally used to tune musical instruments okay and it does not produce music remember music is combination of notes of various frequencies in music one sound is combination of notes of various frequencies in tuning fork you get a sound which is note of a single frequency which is known as a pure note so you see that tuning forks are uh, marked with certain uh, frequencies 128 hertz 256 hertz 512 hertz different frequencies right so these uh, tuning forks uh, have a certain uh, they produce a certain sound of fixed uh, uh, frequency which is known as a pure note okay when we strike the keys of a piano various strings are set in vibration each at its natural frequency when an air column in a flute or organ pipe do you know what is organ pipe flute to everybody knows flute to sabne dekha hai organ pipe dekha hai tumne ye dekho organ pipe to ye churches mein hota hai aise organ pipe hote hain uh ye to bahut bade organ pipes hai chote bhi hote hain ye dekho ye chote se organ pipes hai alag alag size ke aate hain ये ऑर्गन पाइप्स बेसिकली साउंड प्रोड्यूस करते हैं अलग अलग फ्रीक्वेंसी का इसका एक uh, मैं तुम्हें फिगर uh, बताता हूँ ऑर्गन पाइप का स्केच बताता हूँ ये ठीक है तो यहाँ पे एयर uh, फ्लो मतलब एयर इज ब्लोन इन टू दिस पर्टिकुलर होल एंड इट ट्रेवल्स थ्रू दिस स्मॉल होल एंड कम्स आउट फ्रॉम दिस ओपन एंड तो ये इसको ओपन एंडेड ऑर्गन पाइप बोलते हैं ओपन एंडेड ऑर्गन पाइप ऐसे ओपन एंडेड ऑर्गन पाइप का जो साउंड प्रोड्यूस होता है ठीक है वो हमें सुनाई देता है सो so, uh, अलग अलग शेप्स और साइजेस के ऑर्गन पाइप्स होते हैं जिसमें अगर एयर ब्लो करेंगे तो यू गेट डिफरेंट फ्रीक्वेंसीज ऑफ साउंड ठीक है तो ऑर्गन पाइप एक नया वर्ड है जो बार बार ये लोग बताएंगे दैट इज द इंस्ट्रूमेंट विच इज समॉट लाइक फ्लूट सो so, उसके अंदर साउंड कैसे प्रोड्यूस होता है इट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय वाइब्रेटिंग एयर कॉलम रिमेंबर दैट साउंड इज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन फ्लूट और एन ऑर्गन पाइप बाय वाइब्रेटिंग एयर कॉलम सो दैट एयर कॉलम वाइब्रेट्स विद इट्स नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी व्हिच इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द लेंथ ऑफ एयर कॉलम मतलब जितनी लेंथ ऑफ एयर कॉलम छोटी रहेगी 
उतनी फ्रीक्वेंसी ज्यादा रहेगी उतनी फ्रीक्वेंसी ज्यादा रहेगी इन अ फ्लूट द नोट ऑफ डिफरेंट फ्रीक्वेंसी आर प्रोड्यूस बाय चेंजिंग द इफेक्टिव लेंथ ऑफ एयर कॉलम वेन डिफरेंट होल्स इन इट आर क्लोज फ्लूट के अंदर होल होते हैं ना अलग अलग सो इफ यू चेंज इफ यू प्रेस डिफरेंट होल्स यू कैन चेंज द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द साउंड विच इज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन द फ्लूट लेट्स लेट्स सी अ वीडियो and what is the relationship between the length of uh, air column and the frequency of sound which is produced in uh, by the vibrating air column of a flute or an organ pipe let's and let me check out a video and i'll show you okay i didn't get any video of uh, flutes and uh, the holes different holes and the length of air column and the frequency but i got a video for organ pipes so i'm just going to show you this video in case i cannot show you this video like if this uh, does not permit to show in my video then i am going to share this video with you so let's let's play this video and see whether you can uh, if you are able to see it very nice and uh, i think this is very informative video you'll have some idea regarding organ pipes and the length of air column and the frequency let's have a look okay this is a demonstration of organ pipe modes of vibration. Uh, you may already be aware that a longer organ pipe, this is open on one end and also open on the other end and this is where the air is introduced. Then there is a knife edge made out of wood that the stream of air goes through this hole against the knife edge and then there's an instability when when the air is incident on a knife edge it will this instability will cause a puff of air to come out outside of the pipe and then a puff of air to go inside the pipe alternating outside and inside and there's a particular frequency that's associated with this instability and if that frequency matches the length of the pipe then you'll get a resonance in the pipe like that if you move to a shorter pipe it's built the same way uh, the length is shorter you get a higher sound you see uh, the length uh, shorter length of organ pipe produces a sound of higher frequency so jitna length kam rahega utni frequency zyada ye humne pehle bhi uh, wo formula mein padha tha and even shorter you can um, if you blow hard enough in here force different modes to sound in the pipe so he's saying that uh, if you uh, you know if you put air into this organ pipe uh, with greater force so if the intensity of blowing into the pipe blowing air into the pipe increases uh, you can change the frequency you can change the frequency of the sound produced and that is really interesting so if you blow slowly you produce a low frequency sound and if you blow with greater intensity you produce a high frequency sound right what we were hearing just then is the fundamental mode the lowest possible frequency that this pipe will produce but any pipe actually produces a sequence of of frequencies that follow at least approximately the harmonic series so this is the fundamental the lowest possible frequency if i blow a little harder I get a mode that uh, for those of you that have musical background will recognize is approximately an octave above it. Do the same thing on this one. So we get So it's just that he's blowing little harder and a sound of uh, uh you can say uh sound of a frequency higher than the frequency uh the the, the natural frequency was heard. okay almost you can say in the next octave now what is octave i'm just going to talk about it a little later but still just have a look at this demo
You get a, a lower mode, a higher mode, and then there's actually an infinite sequence of these modes that, that goes up to infinity, and that gives the, the organ pipe its character, its characteristic sound. The, uh, as I mentioned before, all of, these all of these pipes that I've shown you so far are open on both ends. If you ask what happens when you close one end, and I'm just going to put my hand across it to close this end, then, uh, well, first I'll do it with it open. See, he's saying that if he closes one end, you tell me, you, what do you think? Sound will be produced or will not be produced? Because that's really interesting. See, there is one opening here, that knife edge opening over here, okay? But this open end, if it is closed with the hand, will the sound be produced or not? I think it will be produced because this still ho this hole is open so the sound can be heard through here or air can come out through here. So sound will be produced but it will be of double the frequency. Let's check. Then close it. So you'll... Oh, the sound is produced of half the frequency, not double the frequency. So I was wrong over there. Notice that the sound is lower. In fact, uh, if you ignore end effects, uh, then the theory predicts that the sound is actually one octave lower, the frequency being half of its original value. That is the reason That's the reason why a clarinet sounds lower than a flute does. Flute and clarinet both have about the same length. The flute is open on both ends, but the clarinet, the mouthpiece end, is effectively closed. And so the lowest notes you can produce on a clarinet are much lower than the, the notes that you can produce on a flute. That's organ pipes. Nice. Very nice video, right? Very informative. So, yes, so that is some, you can say, some knowledge you can take regarding the uh, frequency of sound produced and uh, the length of air column uh, and the natural frequencies which are produced with the certain length. In an organ pipe, uh, open at both ends, which we just saw, different modes of vibrations are of frequency in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to infinity. While in an organ organ pipe with an with one end closed, the frequencies of different modes are in the ratio of one is to three is to five up to infinity. So these are modes of vibrations. Modes of vibrations means uh, the ratio of the frequencies produced in uh, different situations. Like um, you can say maybe if you change or if you decrease or increase the length in the certain ratio, then the frequencies will be uh, changed in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 if uh, the organ pipe is open at both ends and if the organ pipe is uh, closed at one end then the frequencies of different uh, frequencies produced frequencies of sound produced at different uh, of different length will be uh, in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5 and so on okay so that was everything about uh, air column uh, in a flute or an organ pipe. So, uh, are you seeing where we are still studying the natural vibrations? Okay, and in natural vibration, we assume that the uh, situation is ideal. That is, there is no uh, there is no presence of medium around the vibrating body, or the vibrating body is vibrating in vacuum. There is no uh, resistance offered to the vibrating body, and the body continues to vibrate with its natural frequency and time period and with a constant amplitude okay so that's an assumption okay now we'll talk about string instruments like sitar guitar violin etc if one end of the uh, string instruments string is plucked transverse vibration of a definite natural frequency are produced in the string the frequency f of vibration in a stretch, stretched string depends on the length L, the radius R and the tension T, uh, frequency being inversely proportional to the length of the string, frequency being inversely proportional to the radius of the string and frequency is directly proportional to the root of the tension in the string. 
दैट मीन्स दैट मीन्स कि तुम स्ट्रिंग uh, की लेंथ जितनी छोटी करोगे जितनी छोटी लेंथ करोगे तुम उतनी ज्यादा फ्रीक्वेंसी तुम्हें मिलेगी तुम अगर इफ यू नो हाउ टू प्ले गिटार और एनी अदर स्ट्रिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट यू शुड नो दैट इफ यू प्रेस ऑन द फ्रेट बोर्ड ऑफ द गिटार एट एट अ प्लेस विच इज वेरी नियर टू द साउंड होल एंड वेन यू प्लक एट द साउंड होल यू गेट अ साउंड ऑफ वेरी हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी इफ यू प्लक द थिनेस्ट स्ट्रिंग विद द लोएस्ट रेडियस यू गेस गेट अ वेरी हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी If you uh, wind that pegs, pegs or the keys which are given at the head of the guitar, and if you make the string very tight, if you increase the tension, you get the sound of of very high frequency. So frequency of a note produced by a string stretched between its ends is given by f is equal to one by two l uh, under root of t by pi r square d, where d is the density of the material of the string. and pi r square pi r square d is density multiplied by area which is equal to the mass per unit length of the string mass per unit length okay so we have tension upon mass per unit length the whole under root multiplied by 1 by 2 l l is the length of the string so that is the natural frequency of a stringed instrument or a string fixed between both the ends the frequency f of the note can be increased by decreasing the length of the string or by decreasing the radius or thickness of the string and by increasing the tension in the string i just told you that if somebody knows how to play guitar they will quickly recognize seventh uh, uh, example of natural vibration a string of a given length stretched between its ends under given tension can be made to vibrate in different modes by plucking the strings at different points if the string is plucked in the middle the string vibrates in one loop i will show you the figure see this is how the string vibrates in one loop if the string is plucked in the middle here the frequency of the sound produced is the principal frequency of uh, value or ratio 1 if the string is plucked this vibration of this uh, is called the principal note of frequency f if the string is plucked at 1/4 length of the string from the end 1/4 length remember what is 1/4 length now suppose we have a string of length let's say suppose we have a string of length l okay iski length hai l aur ye string ko main yahan pe vibrate kar raha hu is point pe theek hai i am vibrating this string at this point the red point this is l by 4 the length is l by 4 देखो सबसे पहले मैंने उसको वाइब्रेट किया था एग्जैक्टली मिडल पे प्लग करके अब मैं वाइब्रेट कर रहा हूं लेंथ एल बाई फोर फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द फिक्स एंड पे प्लग करके तो जो स्ट्रिंग है इट विल वाइब्रेट विथ अ फ्रीक्वेंसी टू एफ डबल द फ्रीक्वेंसी प्रिंसिपल नोट फ्रीक्वेंसी विच वॉज प्रोड्यूस्ड अर्लियर वेन आई बाई प्लग इट फ्रॉम द मिडल and here the frequency will be 2f or first subsidiary frequency first subsidiary frequency you need to remember this name okay and the loop produced will be like this there will be two loops produced okay string will vibrate in this uh, you can say uh, fashion similarly if the string is plucked at 1/6 length of the string from one end it vibrates with three loops as shown in the figure This vibration is called second subsidiary vibration of frequency 3f. Thus, the different modes of vibration in a stretched string are of frequencies of the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3. If L is the length of the string stretched between its ends, the wavelength of different modes uh, a, b, and c will be 2l, 2l by 2, that is L, and 2l by 3. And wavelengths are in the ratio 3 is to 2 is to 1. Okay, so these Uh, are the you can say modes of vibration 
uh, in a string stretched between the ends when it is plucked at different positions. ठीक है इसके ऊपर कुछ छोटे मोटे क्वेश्चन आ सकते हैं तो जो मैंने बताया इसको याद रखना लेट मी सी इफ आई कैन फाइंड अ वीडियो ऑन दिस ओके आई गॉट अ वीडियो नाउ यू कैन सी अ स्ट्रिंग स्ट्रेच बिटवीन टू फिक्स्ड एंड्स एंड दिस वीडियो इज लिटिल लॉन्गर बट आई एम ट्राइंग टू गेट द पार्ट्स व्हिच वी हैव जस्ट स्टडीड इन द बुक सो लेट्स सी इफ वी कैन फाइंड समथिंग हियर Another way to look at resonance is to look at what are called modes. So you are hearing the term resonance here again and again. In the previous video you heard the word resonance although it is part of our syllabus but we have not studied that uh, uh, that particular term till now. So it's okay, it's okay. It's not a problem. Just have a look at the experiment and we'll try to understand it better and better as we go or move along the chapter, okay? Just look at the video. modes of vibration on a string a mode is just a frequency at which a string like the one shown here wants to vibrate naturally in exactly the same way as a simple harmonic oscillator wants to vibrate naturally at some frequency what we have here is a string that's anchored on one end on the right hand side you can see it's tied onto a clamp that's clamped to the table And on the other end, I've attached it to what used to be a perfectly good mid-range driver, and now won't work very well ever again. Um, we'll see in a minute. I'll, I'll zoom in on some of the details here to see how this thing is going to work. But the idea is that we're going to use the mid-range to inject energy into the string. We're going to move it at different frequencies and see what happens. See how the string behaves if we move it at a very specific and and a well chosen in advance frequency um to see if we can force it into behaving as it normally would when it's ringing at one of its modes of vibration so you can see here this is a close up of what i've done to that poor mid range i've i've glued a post in fact it's just a wood screw onto the dust cap of the mid range and uh i glued some uh, some small sticks on there to keep it uh, to keep it upright because the string is pulling it sideways a little bit what we're going to do is move that driver the the loudspeaker up and down and that's going to of course move the string up and down as we'll see now so here we can see what's happening i'm driving the loudspeaker with an amplifier attached to an oscillator the volume of the amplifier determines the amplitude so how much the woofer is moving up and down and the oscillator i then used to determine the frequency which is how many times per second it moves up and down and as you saw a minute ago the other side of the spring is attached to a clamp i can change the frequency this is about 5 hertz going up to this is something like 10 hertz 9 hertz or so so 9 times per second going up and down or i could go the other way i can go back down to 5 hertz um that's 5 hertz right there or i can go all the way down for example to 1 hertz so this is moving up and down and back up again one time per second so this is the whole system again i'm now driving it at something like 5 hertz 5 times per second and i'm going to increase the frequency bit by bit this is maybe 6 7 hertz up to 8 9 hertz and suddenly you'll see when we hit 11 hertz which i've already found out to be a magic number um what will happen is that the string will suddenly behave differently this is 10 hertz and this is 11 hertz right here so you can see now we'll freeze this the string is in what's called its first mode of vibration this is the frequency 11 hertz for this particular string in this particular setup this is the frequency it wants to resonate at the lowest you see the this is the first mode of vibration now you will ask that uh, the string is not plucked from any positions yeah it is not plucked but when the vibrations are given to the string from the speaker which uh, this this particular in this particular experiment this 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 this, this teacher has uh, this this person has done so the so this in this setup when the vibrations are given to the a uh, string with the help of this vibrating speaker at particular frequency it starts my vibrating with the first mode of frequency that is it is making a single loop now this frequency 11 hertz is known as f that is the principal frequency of vibration for this particular string or of particular length 
the same frequency of vibration would produce if you would pluck the string from the middle middle part okay just have a look at the video just one this 11 hertz so 11 times per second what you can see is that even though we haven't changed the amplitude the amount that the the driver the woofer is moving up and down the amount that the string is moving up and down in the middle has changed dramatically and that's because it wants to ring at this frequency let's start the video again and see what happens if we increase the frequency again so this is 11 hertz let's move it up this is going up to something like 15 or 16 hertz right uh, let's see right here so we've changed now, we're moving faster, still at the same amplitude on the woofer. Now let's go to 22 hertz and see what happens. At 22 hertz, and remember we see our first mode of vibration was 11. Wow, do you see that? Do you see two loops exactly? And that has happened at 22 hertz. That is the frequency of vibration produced when the string would have been plucked from uh, at a distance of... Uh, you can say L by four, that is one fourth the distance of the whole length of the string from the one end. It would vibrate with two loops, that is double the frequency. And the frequency as you can see at the bottom is 22 hertz. And you uh, you see the string is vibrating with uh, two loops, double the frequency of that original uh, number, great. So uh, can you tell uh, me now that uh, if this string uh, uh, would want to create the frequency of 3F, that is your second subsidiary frequency. 2F is the first subsidiary, right, which we just saw, 22 hertz. At which frequency it would create, uh, at, at, at which frequency it would create 3F, second sub subsidiary frequency. So, your guess if you are making it at uh, 33 hertz then it is absolutely correct because if, if at 11 hertz this string started vibrating with a principal frequency uh just a moment okay let's see hertz um at 22 hertz you can see what we have here is the second mode of vibration so this is the next frequency up that the string wants to vibrate at 22 hertz is 2 times 11 hertz. So it's twice the frequency of the first mode of vibration. Yes, first subsidiary again, frequency. I've frozen the, the video here so you can see what's going on. What's happening now is that the string naturally stops vibrating in the middle. But we still have two large uh, excursions, two points where it's moving much more than the woofer is um, on either side of that point where it's stopped. But this happens naturally. I haven't done anything to the string to make this happen other than to put in the frequency where this mode wants to vibrate. So let's start the string uh, moving again. I'll start the video moving again and we can see what happens if we keep going up in frequency. So this is still 22 hertz and then we change to something like 25, 26 hertz and we lose that resonance. Now let's go to 33 hertz which will be the third mode of vibration. Beautiful. Here we are. Beautiful. Do you see three Again, loops? I've stopped the video so that you can see what's going on here. Um, it's basically the same thing again. We have a, uh, a frequency coming into the system, still at the same amplitude, um, but now the string naturally wants to resonate at this frequency. But in order to do that, um, a smaller section of the string has to be vibrating. So it naturally stops vibrating in those two sections you can see there in the middle. Um, and we have these three areas where the string is vibrating up and down more than the amplitude that we're putting in from the woofer. Let's, uh, let's start the video again and go higher in frequency. This is 33 hertz. Let's go up to 37, 38 hertz and up to 44 hertz. Right there. Oh, lovely, lovely. So as you can uh, see from the video that this this will continue happening continue increasing right till n number of vibrations are formed which are unable to be unable to withstand by the string itself so the material of the string and the vibrating uh, body uh, should be able to give that much of uh, you know resistance to the vibration then uh, so that the vibrations can continue increasing in this ratio
right? So we saw very nice example of uh, first the organ pipe and uh, then the air column one and then the string plucked at different ends or string vibrated with different frequencies vibrating with a uh, different number of loops and producing uh, principal notes of frequency and first subsidiary and second subsidiary and third subsidiary and so on uh, frequency of vibrations different modes of vibration in a string okay so this is very very clear okay so now let's let's go to uh, the next topic that is nature of natural vibrations. We just saw so many examples of natural vibrations. Now let's study uh, the nature of natural vibrations. The natural vibrations are the simple harmonic vibrations under restoring force. The amplitude and frequency of which remains constant. Once a body starts vibrating, it continues its vibration with the same amplitude and same frequency forever. Forever. Just see this word forever. Is it practically possible for any body to vibrate with the same amplitude and same frequency forever? No. So natural vibrations are, you can say, ideal case. Ideal means they are not practical cases. They are ideal cases. Figure 7.6 shows the displacement time graph for natural or free vibrations of a body in an ideal conditions. The vibrations of a constant amplitude, as, as you can see here, here the amplitude is constant throughout time, can only occur in vacuum. Since in practice it is impossible to have vacuum, it is very difficult to realize such vibrations in practice. In practice, the surrounding medium offers resistance or friction to the motion so the energy of vibrating body continuously decreases due to which the amplitude of motion gradually decreases and hence we have to study damped vibrations damped vibrations are the vibrations occurring in real practice real life not ideal situation ideal condition but real life it is our common experience that when a body is made to vibrate in a medium the amplitude of the vibrating body continuously decreases with time and ultimately the body stops vibrating. Such vibrations are called damped vibrations. Thus, the periodic vibrations of a body of decreasing amplitude in presence of a resistive force are called damped vibrations. Periodic vibrations of a body of de decreasing amplitude in presence of a resistive force are called the damped vibrations. In damped vibration, two forces act on the body. Number one, the restoring force, which will uh, bring the body to uh, uh, rest. That is, it will stop, it will, it will tend to stop the vibrations of the body. And other is the frictional force or resistive force due to the surrounding medium, which will also tend to stop the vibrations. The amplitude of motion decreases due to the frictional force. The frictional force at any instant is proportional to the velocity of the body that is speed of vibrations and it has the tendency to resist the motion as a result the energy of the vibrating body continuously dissipates that is it is degraded given out in doing work against the force of friction so its amplitude is gradually decreased after some time when it has lost all the energy it stops vibrating the energy lost by the vibrating body changes continuously into the heat energy and it gets dissipated in the surrounding medium. The rate at which energy is lost to the surrounding or the rate of decrease of amplitude depends on the nature that is viscosity, density of the surrounding medium. If the surrounding medium has more density, more viscosity, then the vibrations will stop very quickly. Then the energy will be lost very quickly. And also the, uh, the rate at which energy is lost depends on the shape and size of the vibrating body. Large vibrating body takes a lot of time to lose its all energy and come to rest, stops vibrating. Okay, The displacement time graph for a body executing damped vibration is shown over here. And as you can see, the frequency of the vibrating body is slowly, slowly decreasing and so is the amplitude. And the body slowly stops vibrating and its vibration ceases. Examples of damped vibrations. See all these examples. When, when, when they are carried out uh, 
in uh, natural conditions in presence of resistive medium around the vibrating body they are the examples of damped vibration still they have given some more examples when a slim branch of a tree is pulled and then released it makes damped vibrations because it vibrates and then suddenly after some time it stops vibrating a tuning fork when stroked on a rubber pad it executes executes the damped vibrations in air because uh, the tuning uh, fork starts vibrating produces sound but slowly slowly the sound fades out because the vibration stops due to the resistive forces offered by the air around it a simple pendulum oscillating in air or any other medium executes damped vibrations because simple pendulum starts vibrating with its natural frequency because but due to the restoring force and the resistive force offered by the air frictional force offered by the air the amplitude of vibration goes on decreasing the pen, vibrating pendulum loses its energy and slowly slowly stops vibrating and becomes still the vibrations of a loaded spring in air are damped vibrations so all the examples which we have studied earlier mostly all of them are the kind of uh, the type of damped vibrations or are the examples of damped vibrations when these vibrations happen in air in the presence of a medium around the vibrating body due to the resistive force these vibrations stops eventually and their amplitude slowly slowly decrease and the vibration stops so let's see the differences between natural or free and uh, damped vibrations these differences will give you uh, clear and direct insight to how to write your answer okay the concept will be cleared with these uh, uh, differences in natural vibrations the amplitude of the natural vibrations remain constant and the vibration continue forever damped vibrations the amplitude of the damped vibrations gradually decreases with time and ultimately the vibration ceases or stops in natural vibrations there is no loss of energy in damped vibration in each vibration there is some loss of energy in the form of heat the energy dissipates or is degraded in natural vibrations no external force acts on the vibrating body the vibrations are only under the restoring force restoring force is a force which uh, tries to bring the body to its mean position back again like pendulum mein jab pendulum ko tum uh, displace karte ho to uske upar acceleration due to gravity ki wajah se ek restoring force act karta hai jo usko mean position ke taraf lane ki koshish karta hai तो नेचुरल वाइब्रेशन में सिर्फ रिस्टोरिंग फोर्स ही एक ऐसी कॉज है जो उसको वाइब्रेशन को स्टॉप करने की कोशिश करती है बट इन डैम्प्ड वाइब्रेशन इन एडिशन टू रिस्टोरिंग इन एडिशन ऑफ द रिस्टोरिंग फोर्स ऑफ फ्रिक्शनल और डैम्पिंग फोर्स एक्ट्स ऑन द बॉडी टू अपोज द मोशन वाइब्रेशन इन नेचुरल वाइब्रेशन द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ वाइब्रेशन डिपेंड्स ऑन द साइज एंड शेप ऑफ द बॉडी एंड इट रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट in damped vibration the frequency of vibration is less than the natural frequency so in natural vibrations the body vibrates with its own natural frequency but in damped vibration the body uh, vibrates with a frequency less than its natural frequency okay so these are the differences and uh, we have successfully covered and understood two very important topics of uh, these new topics of this chapter sound okay the third topic we are at the third topic forced vibrations the amplitude of natural vibrations of a body vibrating in a medium cannot remain constant due to the presence of damping forces that is the resistive forces of the surrounding medium however it is possible to keep the amplitude of vibration constant by applying external periodic force such that the external periodic force compensates for the loss of energy in each vibration due to the damping forces so the whichever energy is lost whichever energy is lost uh during the vibration due to the damping forces whichever energy is lost during the vibration due to the damping forces is compensated By an external periodic force, मतलब हम लोग जान बूझ के एक्सप्लिसिटली हम अलग से एक्सटर्नल फोर्स एक्सर्ट करते हैं किसके ऊपर 
ये वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी के ऊपर तो जो एनर्जी वो वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेस की वजह से लूज कर रहा है एक्सटर्नल मीडियम के प्रेजेंस की वजह से जो जो एनर्जी वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी लूज कर रहा है सराउंडिंग को जो एनर्जी डिग्रेड हो रही है वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी की वही एनर्जी को हम वापस वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी को दे रहे हैं बाय अप्लाइंग पीरियोडिक फोर्स पीरियोडिक मतलब रेगुलर इंटरवल ऑफ टाइम पे अगर हम किसी बॉडी को वाइब्रेशन प्रोड्यूस मतलब फोर्स प्रोवाइड करेंगे सो दैट इट्स वाइब्रेशन कंटिन्यू तो ऐसे सिचुएशन में वी कैन से दैट द वाइब्रेशन ऑफ द बॉडी विल बी द फोर्स वाइब्रेशन अब जो बॉडी है इट विल नॉट वाइब्रेट विथ इट्स नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी इट विल नॉट वाइब्रेट विद डैम्प्ड वाइब्रेशन फ्रीक्वेंसी बट इट विल वाइब्रेट विद फोर्स वाइब्रेशन फ्रीक्वेंसी विच इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय अस द वाइब्रेशन ऑफ द बॉडी विल नाउ बी इक्वल टू द फ्रीक्वेंसी द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द वाइब्रेशन ऑफ द बॉडी विल नाउ बी इक्वल टू द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द पीरियोडिक फोर्स विच इज एक्सर्टेड बाय अस ऑन द बॉडी मतलब हम जिस फ्रीक्वेंसी से बॉडी के ऊपर फोर्स एक्सर्ट कर रहे हैं पीरियोडिक फोर्स टू कीप इट वाइब्रेटिंग so that it does not stop vibrating ठीक है उसको हम लोग बोलते हैं कि it is uh, the external periodic force and this uh, external periodic force compensates with the energy degraded and it keeps the body on vibrating and these kind of vibrations are known as forced vibrations the vibrations of the body then are called forced vibrations so इसका एक definition है the vibrations of a body which take place under influence of an external periodic force acting on it are called forced vibration the body executing forced vibration is thus acted upon by three forces jis body ke upar forced vibrations ho rahe uske upar teen force act kar rahe ek to restoring force agar ye pendulum hai to pendulum move kar raha hai to pendulum को कॉन्स्टेंटली एक कोशिश की जा रही है पेंडुलम के ऊपर बाय द फोर्स ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी दैट वो अपनी मेन पोजीशन पे आ जाए राइट right? दूसरा फोर्स एक्ट कर रहा है पेंडुलम पे फ्रिक्शनल और रेजिस्टिव फोर्स जो उसको कॉन्स्टेंटली एयर का जो सराउंडिंग मीडियम का जो फोर्स है वो उसको कॉन्स्टेंटली स्टेट ऑफ रेस्ट पे लाने की कोशिश करता है राइट right? उसको रोकने की कोशिश करता है उसके मोशन को और तीसरा जो फोर्स है ये पहले दो फोर्सेज के अगेंस्ट काम करता है जो हम प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं Explicitly, जान बूझ के दैट इज द एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स मतलब बॉडी कंटिन्यूसली रुकने की कोशिश कर रहा है और एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स कंटिन्यूसली उसको वही वाइब्रेशन से जो एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स के वाइब्रेशन से उसी फ्रीक्वेंसी से मूव कराने की कोशिश कर रहा है मतलब एक पेंडुलम वाइब्रेट कर रहा है और थोड़ा स्लो हो रहा है वैसे ही मैं उसके ऊपर फोर्स एक्सर्ट कर रहा हूँ फिर वो वाइब्रेट कर रहा है थोड़ा स्लो हो रहा है वैसे ही फिर से मैं उसके ऊपर फोर्स एक्सर्ट कर रहा हूँ और मैं क्या कर रहा हूँ मैं जान बूझ के उस पेंडुलम को वाइब्रेशन के मोड में रखने की कोशिश कर रहा हूं सो दैट इट कीप्स ऑन वाइब्रेटिंग समझ में आया सो दिस इज फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन व्हेन द एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स इज अप्लाइड ऑन द वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी द बॉडी नो लॉन्गर वाइब्रेट विथ इट्स ओन नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी बट इट ग्रेड्यूअली अक्वायर द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द अप्लाइड पीरियोडिक फोर्स द एक्सटर्नल अप्लाइड फोर्स इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड ड्राइविंग फोर्स मतलब ये फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन में एक ड्राइविंग फोर्स होता है जो बॉडी को कंटिन्यूसली वाइब्रेट वाइब्रेटिंग पोजीशन या वाइब्रेटिंग सिचुएशन में रखने की कोशिश करता है और ये ड्राइविंग फोर्स की जो फ्रीक्वेंसी वो बॉडी की नई वाइब्रेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी बन जाती है जिससे ये बॉडी वाइब्रेट करता है ठीक है विच इज नोन एज द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स और फोर्स्ड फ्रीक्वेंसी इसको फोर्स्ड फ्रीक्वेंसी भी बोलता है ठीक है समझ में आया ओके okay. इसका एक वीडियो डेफिनेटली बनता है यार बिकॉज आई आई मुझे रियली really नहीं लगा था कि आई कुड शो सो मेनी डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन बिकॉज आई थॉट दैट ये सिंपल थियरी चैप्टर है और तुम लोग को समझ जाएगा बट वाइल मेकिंग यू नो वाइल यू आर इन क्लास रूम एंड वेन आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग यू एंड वाइल यू आर आई एम टीचिंग यू थ्रू दिस ऑनलाइन मीडियम I feel that I need to show you so many things so that your concepts are clear. So let me show you one video of forced vibration as well. Okay, this is one of my most favorite professor 
on uh, YouTube and uh, I feel that his videos are amazing. Uh, he is, although these videos are really old, but they are still uh, valid because the physics which we are studying never gets old. You know, the some things in physics are uh, true forever because these are kind of laws which the bodies uh, follow. Okay, so let's let's look at this video. ऐसा लग रहा है कोई हॉरर मूवी शुरू हो रही थ्रिलर क्राइम ड्रामा How do you do ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls and teachers Oh he is amazing look at the confidence man I am Julia Sumner Miller and physics is my business and my business today making more noise I suppose or sound or some such more exactly this business of resonance and forced vibrations consider the following which i tried on an earlier lesson to do but with uh, not too much success for some reason about this i should say more you know already my philosophy experiments demonstrations never fail for nature to do what you want her to do you must make some very special meet some very special requirements if they are not met absolutely precisely, nature will not show what you want her to show. She will do something else. So if the experiment did not succeed in an earlier uh, uh, case, we'll try it again. But we are forced to think of why didn't it work before. Two forks. Middle C. Middle C. We hope they're identical. Hollow chambers, resonating chambers. I'm going to strike this one, quiet it, and we will hear that one. Why? This emits 256 pulses per second, which are fed into this one. This picks them up and is set into oscillation. Listen now. There it is, clear as the nose on my face. Do you see that? So I'm going to do it again in the reverse order. Just listen. See. So he what he does is he uh, strikes this first tuning fork, which is fixed with this box and the tuning fork vibrates. It forces the box to vibrate with its own frequency, which I told you is the example of forced vibration. The air inside this box also vibrates with the frequency of the uh, box which is the frequency of the tuning fork so the air starts vibrating with the frequency of tuning fork which is again a forced vibration the air vibrates and travels to the other box and gives its vibration to the air present inside this box in the opposite side on the opposite side again forced vibration this air vibrates this box on the left side the box begins to vibrate with the same frequency which is given by the air which is again forced vibration So, matlab sari vibrating body ek dusre ko force kar rahi hai usi frequency se vibrate karne ke liye jo frequency ye tuning fork ki hai right or in the end this tuning fork starts vibrating with its uh, with its with a forced vibration which is given to the uh, tuning fork which is struck on the right side right so let's 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 have a look at it there it is now how far apart could this be made to happen oh great distances because this is exactly what your ear does and you could hear me at some great distance i am sure resonance resonance consider now the following i have here two again they are using the word resonance and we are just about to start with the resonance and these are the demonstrations of resonance okay so i'm going to cite these examples when i'm going to teach you resonance okay so just have a look very carefully so that when we discuss resonance you know what i'm talking about two cardboard tubes one of which slips inside the other so that i can change the total effective length i am going to strike a tuning fork and hold it in front of this open pipe which is so long which has a certain natural frequency, I'm going to change the length by this sliding tube 
and hope to find a resonant length for this fork. Listen now. Yeah, there is a place. There is a place at which this length is resonant to this frequency. That's an open pipe. This end is open, that's open. Here is a closed one. So what is happening? Uh, when he put this uh, vibrating tuning fork near the end of this open pipe and changed the length, uh, the vibrating tuning fork forced the air inside this pipe to vibrate with its own frequency. So there are there is an example of forced vibration. Now at in one position, the forced vibrations were matched with the natural frequency of the uh, air column of the pipe and then the resonance happened which i'm going to teach you now so resonance is when the forced frequency of a vibrating body or given to a vibrating body matches with its natural frequency and a loud sound is heard okay so we are going to we are going towards that particular topic now look at this particular. now it would be an interesting exercise to compare the lengths of the open and closed pipes for the same fork but i leave that as an exercise for you this is closed because it is closed on the bottom of the table. Listen. Uh-huh. Let me use another fork. This fork happens to be what? Uh, uh, 512, that's uh, an octave above middle C. Oh, I can't get a length there. There it is. There is somewhere in there. Let me try this open one. Very clearly resonant, very clearly resonant. Or, as I might do it, consider here. Here is a glass a cylinder with some water in it and a lucite tube. And uh, this is a closed end, so the air column here constitutes a closed tube. Let me show you resonance. it is. Now what can one do with this? By making certain measurements, we can determine the velocity of sound in air. Here is another tube, another fork. Oh, very clearly resonant. I hope if the tube is long enough to find another resonant length. Listen. Yeah, pretty nearly, I couldn't quite make it with the lengths available to me. Resonance, resonance. I want to show it to you in a more delightful fashion. Here is something really enchanting. A wooden frame, which is hollow, so, like the belly of a piano or of a fiddle. A tightly drawn string with two bridges, one here and one here, so that I have cut off a certain length of string this long. The string, therefore, has such a length, is under such a tension, and is so fat. Now that string has a certain frequency. Listen. It therefore has a certain pitch. It is resonant to a certain fork. Proof. I've put a little paper rider on there because if the string is vibrating, you can't see it. And I'm going to strike a fork and apply the end of the fork to one of the bridges. And we hope that the energy of the vibrating fork is communicated through its stem to the string. And if the string is vibrating, we would hope to see the little flag there quiver. Watch it now. Oh, yeah, I like that. Let's get tight on that again. Do you see that? How the tuning fork was given vibrations and then the vibrations of tuning fork were given to the bridge which reached the uh, string and the string began to vibrate and that vibrations of the string were, were given to that piece of paper over there. 
and that paper uh, fell off. Did you see that paper fell off? Oh, see. oh yeah, I like that. Let's yeah, so, so these are all the examples of the, the video is very long. I can't show you the full video, but I will definitely give you the link to this. Uh, so yeah, these all are the examples of you can say forced vibrations where where there is a driving force which forces the body to vibrate with its own uh, uh, natural frequency. Okay. Okay. So there is there are some certain more things. The amplitude of the forced vibrations depends on the frequency of external force. If the frequency of the external force is different from the natural frequency of the body, the amplitude of oscillations is very small. Okay, so in forced vibrations, let me write over here. In forced vibrations, it is not necessary that uh, amplitude Sorry, frequency, not amplitude. Frequency of a driving force may or may not be equal to the natural frequency. of vibrating body in forced vibrations frequency of driving force may not or may or may not be equal to the natural frequency of vibrating body in case the frequency of driving force is not equal to the natural frequency of vibrating body then the uh, the amplitude of the forced vibrations produced in the body will be of small amplitude. Okay. The amplitude of vibration will be small if the natural frequency of the vibrating body does not match with the frequency of the driving force. Matlab jis force se body ko vibrate kar rahe agar uski frequency, uski frequency, periodic force ki frequency or body ke natural frequency match nahi karegi. So amplitude of oscillation kya hoga? Very small. Matlab body will vibrate, but it will not be, uh, the sound produced due to these vibrations will not be very loud. But if the frequency of external force is exactly equal to the natural frequency of vibrating body, the amplitude of oscillation is very large. However, the amplitude of forced vibration does not change with time. Okay. So let's see some examples of forced vibration. When a stem of vibrating tuning fork is pressed against a tabletop, the tuning fork forces the tabletop to vibrate with its own frequency. The vibrations produced in the tabletop are forced vibration. The tabletop has a much larger area than tuning fork, so the vibrations of the tabletop send forth a greater energy and produce a louder sound, more intense sound than produced by the tuning fork. Right, so one body is forcing the other body to vibrate with its own natural frequency. That is forced vibration. Tuning fork is forcing the table to vibrate with its own natural frequency. Forced vibration. Vibrations produced in the diaphragm of microphone sound box with frequencies corresponding to the speech of the speaker or the music are forced vibration. Right, speaker may. Jo vibration produce hote hai, wo forced vibration hai. Kaun force kar hai? The uh, sound which is given into the microphone by a speaker, by a singer, by a musical instrument. Vahan se jo vibrations ja rahe hai, They are forcing the uh, diaphragm of the uh, speaker to vibrate with the frequencies of the corresponding to the speech of the speaker. In guitar, an artist applies periodic force on the strings of the guitar to execute the forced vibrations on them. Guitar mein ek bar strum kiya tumne, string ko pluck kiya, to continuously vibrations produce nahi hota hai. You need to pluck the strings again and again. You keep, you need to keep on strumming so that the sound is continuously produced. So this continuous strumming is nothing but forced vibration. 
the the driving force is the continuous strum which is applied by the guitar player in stringed instruments provided with a hollow sound box containing air strings are made to vibrate by plucking which produces forced vibration in the air of the sound box guitar ke sound box mein hole hota hai uske andar air hoti hai that is forced to vibrate with the natural frequency of the strings which are plucked by the guitar player the surface area of air inside the sound box is large so the forced vibration produced inside the sound box the forced vibration of air produced inside the sound box sends forth a greater energy and causes a loud sound so our next difference is between natural or pre vibrations and forced vibrations the vibrations of a body in absence of any resistive or external force are called natural vibrations right jo vacuum mein hote but the vibrations of a body in a medium presence uh, in presence of an external periodic force are called forced vibrations matlab continuously koi ek external force hai jo body ko vibration mode mein rakh raha hai the frequency of vibration depends on the shape and size of the body in natural vibrations and the frequency of vibration is equal to the frequency of the applied force in forced vibrations the frequency of vibration remains constant in natural vibrations but the frequency of vibration changes with the change in frequency of the applied force periodic force to sab kuch periodic force pe depend karta hai forced vibration pe amplitude of vibration remains constant with time in natural vibrations which is an ideal situation that does not happen in practical cases but the amplitude of vibration depends on the frequency of the applied force and it does not change with time if the applied force is constant and gives a, a force at a constant frequency the amplitude of vibrations produced in the body will also be constant with time and now we are ready to look at resonance jo cheez abhi tak hum log sun rahe the bar bar theek hai to abhi tak tumne kya samjha hai let's 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 have a small i when a body vibrates in a medium under the influence of an external periodic force iska matlab hai forced vibration theek hai matlab resonance is a special case of forced vibration यहाँ पे एक बॉडी वाइब्रेट कर रहा है बट इट इज वाइब्रेटिंग अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ एन एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी एग्जैक्टली इक्वल यहाँ पे एम्फेसाइज दिया है एग्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ अ वाइब्रेशन ऑफ द बॉडी इफ द बॉडी वाइब्रेट्स विद अ फ्रीक्वेंसी एग्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन आई एम सॉरी मैंने उल्टा बोला इफ अ बॉडी वाइब्रेट्स Uh, under the influence of an external periodic force of frequency exactly equal to the natural frequency of the vibrations of the body it is said to execute resonant vibrations these vibrations are of large amplitude yahan pe amplitude bahut bada hota hai yahi cheez maine tumhe bataya yahan pe maine tumhe bataya tha ye same cheez forced vibration mein driving force ki frequency नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी से इक्वल हो भी सकती है नहीं भी हो सकती जो हम केस पढ़ रहे हैं रेजोनेंट फ्रीक्वेंसी का इसमें ड्राइविंग फोर्स की फ्रीक्वेंसी बॉडी की नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी से मैच करती है और जब ये फ्रीक्वेंसी मैच करती है ड्राइविंग फोर्स की फ्रीक्वेंसी बॉडी की नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी से जब मैच करती है रेजोनेंस प्रोड्यूस होता है और रेजोनेंस रेजोनेंट फ्रीक्वेंसी का जो वाइब्रेशन होता है दैट इज वाइब्रेशन ऑफ अ वेरी लार्ज एम्पलीट्यूड ठीक है, द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ रेजोनेंस डिपेंड्स ऑन द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्सेस दस रेजोनेंस इज अ स्पेशल केस ऑफ फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन रेजोनेंस इज अ स्पेशल केस ऑफ फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन वेन द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द एक्सटर्नली अप्लाइड पीरियोडिक फोर्स ऑन अ बॉडी इज इक्वल टू इट्स नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी द बॉडी रेडिली बिगिन्स टू वाइब्रेट विथ एन इंक्रीज एम्पलीट्यूड एक्सटर्नल अप्लाइड पीरियोडिक फोर्स की फ्रीक्वेंसी किसी बॉडी की नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी से जब मैच कर जाती है तो रेजोनेंस प्रोड्यूस होता है और बॉडी जब रेजोनेंट वाइब्रेशन प्रोड्यूस करती है या एक्सपीरियंस करती है इट स्टार्ट्स वाइब्रेटिंग विद अ लार्ज एम्पलीट्यूड 
This phenomena is known as resonance. The vibrations of large amplitude are called resonant vibrations. ठीक है इसका एक एग्जाम्पल दिया है वो लोगों ने सपोज अ बॉडी इज सेट टू वाइब्रेट फ्रीली एंड इट वाइब्रेट विद फ्रीक्वेंसी एफ इट इज द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द वाइब्रेशन ऑफ द बॉडी नाउ लेट अ पीरियोडिक फोर्स ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी एन बी अप्लाइड ऑन दिस वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी सो दैट दिस पीरियोडिक फोर्स विल अलाउ द बॉडी टू वाइब्रेट विद द सेम फ्रीक्वेंसी फॉर इनफाइनाइट टाइम If the value of the frequency of this periodic force is equal to the value of the frequency of the natural vibrations of the body, then resonance takes place. मतलब applied force का जो frequency है, applied force का जो frequency है, वो अगर match करेगा, किससे match करेगा? Natural frequency of the body से. तो body energy gain करना शुरू करता है. किससे? Source of applied force से. The body starts getting energy from the source of applied periodic force, and so its amplitude of vibration is increased. In case n is greater or less than the natural frequency of the vibrating body, there will be no resonance. मतलब अगर body की natural frequency और applied force की जो frequency है, periodic force की जो frequency है, उसमें जरा सा जरा सा भी फर्क हुआ, जरा सा भी फर्क इधर अप्लाइड फोर्स की फ्रीक्वेंसी ग्रेटर या स्मॉलर हुई नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द बॉडी की बॉडी से तो वाइब्रेशन प्रोड्यूस नहीं होगा देर विल बी नो रेजोनेंस आई एम सॉरी रेजोनेंस प्रोड्यूस नहीं होगा वाइब्रेशन तो होगा लेकिन वाइब्रेशन का ऑसिलेशन छोटा होगा रेजोनेंस प्रोड्यूस नहीं होगा एंड बॉडी विल एग्जीक्यूट ओनली द फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन ऑफ स्मॉल एम्पलीट्यूड तो रेजोनेंस इज अ स्पेशल केस ऑफ फोर्स वाइब्रेशन जहां पे बॉडी की नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन की फ्रीक्वेंसी के साथ मैच करती है ये हमेशा नहीं होता ये किसी किसी केस में होता है कंडीशन फॉर रेजोनेंस रेजोनेंस अकर्स ओनली व्हेन फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द अप्लाइड फोर्स इज एक्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द वाइब्रेटिंग बॉडी एंड द अप्लाइड फोर्स कॉजेस फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन इन द बॉडी At resonance, a loud sound is heard because the body vibrating with large amplitude sends forth a large amount of energy in the medium. Demonstration of resonance, देखो हमने जो demonstration कुछ videos में भी देखे थे ये demonstrations देखो resonance with a tuning fork. तो यहां पर एक tuning fork है इसको एक box के ऊपर रखा गया है sound box के अंदर sound ये जो tuning fork है उसकी frequency है n. और यहाँ पे दूसरा साउंड बॉक्स है उसके ऊपर और एक ट्यूनिंग फोर्क है बी जिसकी नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ये ट्यूनिंग फोर्क की नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी के साथ कोइंसिडेंटली मैच करती है नाउ स्ट्राइक दिस ट्यूनिंग फोर्क विथ विथ रबर पैड और समथिंग लाइक दैट सो इट स्टार्ट्स वाइब्रेटिंग विथ इट्स नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी तो ये ट्यूनिंग फोर्क जब वाइब्रेट करेगा ये अपने वाइब्रेशन को पास ऑन करेगा टू द साउंड बॉक्स ये साउंड बॉक्स वाइब्रेट करेगा विद द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द ट्यूनिंग फोर्क ठीक है अब साउंड बॉक्स जो वाइब्रेशन रिसीव कर रहा है दैट इज फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन ये साउंड बॉक्स आगे वाइब्रेशन कैरी ऑन करेगा पास ऑन करेगा टू द एयर प्रेजेंट इनसाइड द साउंड बॉक्स ये जो एयर है प्रेजेंट इन द साउंड बॉक्स वो भी वाइब्रेट करेगा विथ द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द वाइब्रेटिंग ट्यूनिंग फोर्क विच इज प्लेस्ड अबाउ द बॉक्स द ट्यूनिंग फोर्क ए and this vibrating air will pass on this vibration to the air which is there in the second sound box which also starts vibrating with the same frequency as the uh, frequency of the tuning fork matlab yahan pe forced vibration ya fir hum bol sakte hai ki periodic force kon exert kar raha hai the vibrating tuning fork a theek hai now this air begins to vibrate with the natural frequency or we can say with the forced frequency of tuning fork a which passes its vibration to the sound box b uh, in and sound box in turn the in turns passes the uh, vibrations to the tuning fork b and the tuning fork b also begins to vibrate but what happens is since tuning fork a and b have the same natural uh, frequency of vibration the vibrations received by tuning fork b matches with its own natural frequency and tuning fork b begins to vibrate very loudly and it produces a loud sound so there is a resonance happening between tuning fork a and tuning fork b
ठीक है ये है एग्जाम्पल रेजोनेंस का जहां पे ट्यूनिंग फोर्क ए ने ट्यूनिंग फोर्क बी को फोर्स किया अपनी फ्रीक्वेंसी से वाइब्रेट करने के लिए और को इंसिडेंटली ट्यूनिंग फोर्क ए और बी की जो नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी है वो मैच कर गई तो ट्यूनिंग फोर्क बी पे जो फोर्स वाइब्रेशन की फ्रीक्वेंसी है वो उसकी खुद की नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी से मैच कर गई इसलिए ट्यूनिंग फोर्क बी लाउड एम्पलीट्यूड से लार्ज एम्पलीट्यूड से वाइब्रेट करने लगा ठीक है और रेजोनेंस प्रोड्यूस हुआ सेकेंड एक्सपेरिमेंट फोर्स्ड एंड रेजोनेंट वाइब्रेशन ऑफ पेंडुलम मैं डायरेक्टली फिगर देख के ही तुम्हें एक्सप्लेन कर रहा हूं ठीक है एक रबर स्ट्रिंग है पी क्यू इसके ऊपर चार अलग अलग पेंडुलम्स हैं जिनमें से दो पेंडुलम्स ए और बी की लेंथ सेम है पेंडुलम ए को डिस्प्लेस करते हैं अपनी मेन पोजीशन से तो पेंडुलम ए बिगिंस वाइब्रेटिंग विथ इट्स ओन नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी विच डिपेंड्स ऑन इट्स लेंथ एंड एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी विच इज सेम फॉर ऑल द पेंडुलम्स नाउ पेंडुलम ए बिगिन्स वाइब्रेटिंग it passes on this vibration through the rubber string to all the other pendulums now all the other pendulums they are also forced to vibrate with the natural frequency or with the external periodic force frequency of external periodic force provided by pendulum a pendulum a jo external periodic force provide kar raha hai usi frequency se pendulum c pendulum b pendulum d ye sab ko uh, sab log vibrate karna shuru karte hain ab पेंडुलम सी और पेंडुलम डी की लेंथ अलग अलग है इट डज नॉट मैच विदेंथ ऑफ पेंडुलम ए सो पेंडुलम सी एंड पेंडुलम डी वाइब्रेट बट दे वाइब्रेट विद वेरी स्मॉल एम्पलीट्यूड मतलब जो फोर्स वाइब्रेशन प्रोड्यूस हो रहे पेंडुलम सी और पेंडुलम डी में दे डू नॉट मैच विद देर नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड दैट्स वाई द ऑसिलेशन प्रोड्यूस्ड इन पेंडुलम सी एंड पेंडुलम डी आर ऑफ स्मॉल एम्पलीट्यूड बट वेन दीज फोर्स वाइब्रेशन रीच इज पेंडुलम बी Coincidentally, the length of pendulum A and pendulum B is the same. Therefore, the natural frequency of pendulum B and the frequency received by it, that is, the frequency of the forced vibration received by pendulum B, is matching with its own natural frequency. Hence, pendulum B also vibr starts vibrating with the same amplitude as the pendulum A. That means there is a resonance happening between pendulum A and pendulum B. तो पेंडुलम ए और पेंडुलम बी लार्ज एम्पलीट्यूड से वाइब्रेट करेंगे पेंडुलम सी और पेंडुलम डी स्मॉल एम्पलीट्यूड से वाइब्रेट करेंगे इसका एक वीडियो मैं तुम्हें अलग से भेजूंगा ठीक है इसका एक्सप्लेनेशन जैसे मैंने बताया वैसे वो लोग ने लिखा है तुम इसको रीड भी कर सकते हो बट इफ यू हैव जस्ट हर्ड मी यू नो वॉट इज है नेक्स्ट एक्सपेरिमेंट थ्री रेजोनेंस इन एयर कॉलम देखो यहां पर एक एक्सपेरिमेंट सेटअप uh, दिखाया है जिसमें एक रबर uh, ट्यूब है जो एक टेस्ट uh, ट्यूब या फिर एक एयर uh, कॉलम uh, एक एक थिन ट्यूब से कनेक्टेड है बेसिकली जिसमें वाटर स्टोर्ड है अप टू अ सर्टेन हाइट और उसके ऊपर खाली जगह है दैट इज एयर कॉलम और जो दूसरा एंड है ट्यूब का वो एक रिजर्व वायर या फिर एक uh, एक एक वेसल के साथ अटैच नाउ वॉट हैपन्स इज इफ यू चेंज द a uh, level of uh, test tube a or the tube a you can uh, uh, change the level of water inside the tube a so if you move the tube uh, a up the level of water in tube a uh, falls down if you move the tube a uh, down then the level of water in tube a increases so you can change the level of water and by by changing the level of water what you are changing you are changing the length or height of the air column you are changing the height of the air column so by changing the height of the air column what happens you are creating the height of different different uh, uh, you are creating air columns of different different heights theek okay? hai so at each different height what you can do is you can bring a vibrating tuning fork near the mouth of this uh, closed you can call it a closed air column right because yahan pe to water hai to ye closed air column closed from one end you can bring a, a tuning vibrating tuning fork to the mouth of this air column and you can check what changes happen in this uh, vibrating air column uh in its uh, sound produced in the vibrating air column 
when you change the height or the position of air okay so ek cheez observe hoti hai jaise air column ki length kam hoti short hoti hai to frequency of vibration increases the air column starts vibrating with a greater frequency with a greater frequency as the length of air column is decreased and uh, at certain lengths of air column loud sound is heard so this these lengths are the resonating length ye length pe vibrating air column ki ye particular lengths pe air column ki jo natural frequency hai wo tuning fork ki natural frequency या फिर एक्सटर्नल पीरियोडिक फोर्स की नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी के साथ मैच कर जाती है और यहां पे प्रोड्यूस होता है रेजोनेंस यहां पे एक्सटर्नल फोर्स या पीरियोडिक फोर्स कौन प्रोड्यूस कर रहा है कौन प्रोवाइड कर रहा है ट्यूनिंग फोर्स और ये पीरियोडिक फोर्स की वजह से कौन वाइब्रेट कर रहा है एयर कॉलम और एयर कॉलम की जो सर्टेन लेंथ्स है यहां पे सर्टेन लेंथ की वजह सर्टेन लेंथ में जो चेंजेस आते हैं उसकी वजह से कुछ पर्टिकुलर लेंथ ऐसी है जहां पे लाउड साउंड सुनाई देता है मतलब रेजोनेंस होता है तो ऑब्जर्वेशन ये है कि लाउड साउंड इज हर्ड एट अ सर्टेन लेवल ऑफ वाटर ऑन फर्दर लोअरिंग द लेवल ऑफ वाटर इन ट्यूब ए अ लाउड साउंड सीजेस बट व्हेन द लेंथ ऑफ एयर कॉलम इन द ट्यूब बिकम्स थ्री टाइम्स द प्रीवियस वन अ लाउड साउंड इज हर्ड अगेन मतलब एक रेशियो है 1:3:5 5 किसका लेंथ ऑफ एयर कॉलम का यहां पे स्केल पे तुम मेजर कर सकते हो कि 10 सेंटीमीटर पे लाउड साउंड सुनाई दिया फिर 30 सेंटीमीटर पे लाउड साउंड सुनाई दिया फिर 50 सेंटीमीटर पे लाउड साउंड सुनाई दिया इसका मतलब है जो लेंथ है एयर कॉलम की वो वन इज टू थ्री इज टू फाइव के रेशियो में जब इंक्रीज होती है तब तब वो पीरियोडिक फोर्सेस इस पे लाउड साउंड प्रोड्यूस कर सकते हैं मतलब तब उस लेंथ पे रेजोनेंस होता है तो वाइब्रेटिंग ट्यूनिंग फोर्क हेल्ड जस्ट अबाउट द माउथ ऑफ ट्यूब ए प्रोवाइड्स फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन इन द एयर कॉलम ऑफ ट्यूब ए व्हेन द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ एयर कॉलम इज डिक्रीज्ड बाय इंक्रीजिंग द लेंथ ऑफ एयर कॉलम दैट इज लोअरिंग द वाटर लेवल इन द ट्यूब एट अ सर्टेन लेवल ऑफ वाटर अ लाउड साउंड इज हर्ड दिस हैपेंस व्हेन द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ एयर कॉलम बिकम्स इक्वल टू द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द ट्यूनिंग फोर्क दैट इज द vibrations of air column are in resonance with those of the fork which is the periodic force which is exerted on the uh, air column on further lowering the water level in tube a the frequency of air column does not remain equal to the frequency of the fork so the loud sound ceases but on further lowering the level of water a stage is again reached when loud sound is heard at this stage the frequency of air column again becomes equal to the frequency of tuning fork uh, when the length of air column becomes 3 times the previous length so the resonance occurs theek hai do in air column of given length with one end closed the frequency of different modes of vibration are in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5 and so on but if the length of air column with one end closed is tripled the frequency of vibration of air column remains the same because the wavelength remains the same to iska matlab hai ki jo resonance hota hai wo certain lengths pe hota hai jo maine tumhe bataya jiska ratio hai 1 is to 3 is to 5 and so on when the length of air column is closed from one end in this particular experiment to ye aur ek experiment hai resonance ka theek hai iske upar kuch practical based question tumhe puche jayenge so i hope this experiment was clear so now we are able to differentiate between forced and resonant vibrations so much of uh, information so much of theory is covered in this chapter we started with natural vibrations all its examples then we did uh, damped vibrations then the difference between natural and damped vibrations then we did forced vibration then the difference between natural and forced vibration then a special case case of forced forced vibration which is resonant vibration now we are doing the difference between forced and resonance vibrations in forced vibrations the vibrations of a body under an external periodic force of frequency different from the natural frequency of the body and the vibrations of a body under external periodic force of frequency exactly equal to the natural frequency of the body are called resonant vibrations dono forced vibration hai lekin sirf resonant vibration mein natural frequency of the body matches with the frequency of the external periodic force 
the amplitude of vibration is usually small in forced vibration but the amplitude of vibration is very large in resonant vibration the vibrations of the why the amplitude is very large in resonant vibration maine bataya tha ye to the amplitude of resonant vibration is very large since the body which is vibrating gains energy from the uh, periodic force which matches with the frequency of the uh, vibrating body the vibrations of the body are not in phase with external periodic force in forced vibration the vibrations of the body are in phase with the external periodic force in resonant vibrations the these vibrations last for a very small time after the periodic force has ceased to act फोर्स वाइब्रेशन की बात की है रेजोनेंट वाइब्रेशन में दीज वाइब्रेशन लास्ट फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम आफ्टर द पीरियोडिक फोर्स हैज सीज्ड टू एक्ट ओके सो दीज आर द डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन फोर्स एंड रेजोनेंट वाइब्रेशन सम एग्जांपल्स ऑफ रेजोनेंस रेजोनेंट वाइब्रेशंस ऑफ पेंडुलम्स एज डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर इन एक्सपेरिमेंट 2 इफ टू पेंडुलम्स ऑफ सेम लेंथ आर सस्पेंडेड फ्रॉम अ रबर स्ट्रिंग and one pendulum is made to vibrate the other pendulum also starts vibrating with large amplitude and in the same phase because of resonance ye abhi humne experiment kiya uska hi example de raha resonance in machine part this is very interesting when a vehicle is driven the piston of the engine makes to and fro motion at a frequency depending upon the speed of the vehicle the vibrations caused by the movement of piston are transmitted to all the parts of the vehicle it is just possible that at certain speed of the vehicle some parts of the vehicle or its frame may have its natural frequency of vibration equal to the frequency of uh, to and fro movements of the piston that is the engine at this particular speed of the vehicle uh, that a particular part starts vibrating vigorously due to resonance and a rattling sound is heard तुम बीईएसटी की की बसेस बसेस में में बैठे बैठे हो हो या एनएमएमटी एसी बस की बात नहीं कर रहा नॉर्मल बस की बात कर रहा तो जहां पे ड्राइवर बैठता है वहीं पे इंजन होता है तो कभी कभी वो जो बस स्टार्ट करता है ना तब वो इंजन वाला जो पार्ट होता है उसके ऊपर का जो पतरा होता है इट स्टार्ट वाइब्रेटिंग वेरी लाउडली स्टार्ट रैटलिंग बिकॉज ऑफ रेजोनेस दिस इज है क्योंकि इंजन का जो फोर्स्ड वाइब्रेशन वो वो जो इंजन के ऊपर का जो कवर है पतरे का उसके साथ उसके नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी के साथ मैच करता है तो इसकी वजह से वो उसके ऊपर के कवर में रेजोनेंस uh, प्रोड्यूस होता है एंड इट स्टार्ट्स रैटलिंग वेरी लाउडली इफ दिस पार्ट इज नॉट टाइटली फिक्स सच वाइब्रेशन मे कॉज द पार्ट टू ड्रॉप आउट टू टू स्टॉप दीज वाइब्रेशन द स्पीड ऑफ द व्हीकल इज चेंज सो दैट द कंडीशन ऑफ रेजोनेंस डज नॉट होल्ड in this manner resonance can occur in all kinds of machine while operating in a particular condition tumhare uh, washing machine mein bhi to resonance hota hai kabhi kabhi tumne notice kiya hoga ki washing machine mein jo last cycle hota hai that is spin cycle matlab jahan pe kapde sookhte hain kapdon mein se pani ko uh, centrifugal force ke help se bahar nikala jata hai right to kapdon ke jo sukhane ka phase hai tab washing machine bahut speed mein uh, uh, turn karta hai वहां पे वॉशिंग मशीन का जो अंदर का व्हील है जो टर्न कर रहा है और बाहर का जो उसका केसिंग है अगर उनकी नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसीज मैच कर जाती है मतलब पीरियोडिक फोर्स एग्जर्ट करने वाले अंदर के ड्रम और बाहर का जो केस है उसकी नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी अगर मैच कर गई तो वॉशिंग मशीन स्टार्ट वाइब्रेटिंग वेरी विगरसली अपनी जगह पे वो डांस करने लगता है एंड दैट इज ड्यू टू रेजोनेस राइट So, uh, कोई भी मशीन में हो सकता है रेजोनेंस और रेजोनेंस नहीं होने के लिए वी हैव टू या रेजोनेंस के वाइब्रेशन को कंट्रोल करने के लिए वी हैव टू यू कैन से स्टेबिलाईज एनी मशीन विच इज एनी मूविंग मशीन और मूविंग पार्ट्स ऑफ द मशीन और मशीन हैविंग मूविंग पार्ट्स वेरी नाइसली विद द ग्राउंड सो दैट इट डज नॉट वाइब्रेट विगरसली एंड डज नॉट लूज कंट्रोल resonance in a stretched string and sound box of musical instrument and sonometer uh bahut sare musical instruments mein sound box hota hai jaise ki guitar mein hota hai so uh, generally the sound box is designed in such a way that when the guitar strings are uh, strummed or struck or plucked uh, they the natural frequencies of the air column inside the hollow sound box 
matches with the frequency of the forced vibration produced by the vibrating strings and resonance occurs over there and a loud sound is heard. So whenever guitar is struck, a loud sound is heard because of the resonance between the air inside the sound box and the vibrating uh, strings. Okay, so that's an example of resonance. Resonance in air column and tuning fork. As described in the uh, experiment 3, which air column wala experiment kiya, when the frequency of air column becomes equal to the frequency of tuning fork, vibration vibrating over its mouth, a loud sound is heard due to the resonance. And this happens at various heights, which are in the ratio, which are thought to be in the ratio or said to be or experimentally found to be in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5. Resonance in a bridge. This is very important and uh, uh, some questions give reasons and so, such questions are asked based on this particular, uh, you can say, uh, observation. When a troop, uh, army troop, crosses a suspension bridge, suspension bridge is a bridge which is suspended with the help of cables. Okay. In certain mountainous regions, uh, there are suspension bridges. Let me show you a photo of suspension bridge. Uh, I'm sure a bigger photo will be shown. I want to show you a smaller suspension bridge. Suspension bridge. See, these kind of bridges are suspension bridges, but these are very large suspension bridges. Okay. So, as is suspension bridges, ke upar jab troops, army ke troops march, karte, marching, karte, to unko unko bola jata hai ke do not march break the steps theek hai because if they march with certain frequency certain fixed frequency and uh, of their periodic force to unka jo uh, force exert kar rahe hain uski frequency agar bridge ki natural frequency ke sath match kar jayegi to bridge will start start vibrating with a large amplitude because resonance ho jayega and then the bridge can break Right. So, uh, in order to uh, for the uh, uh, bridge to be uh, safe under these conditions, the troops are asked to break their steps to stop marching while they are crossing the bridge. Bridge ke upar marching nahi karna chahiye. Because resonance se bridge ko damage ho sakta hai. Resonance in radio and TV receivers. Ye bhi important hai. The tuning of radio and TV receivers is based on resonance. The radio and TV receivers have electronic circuits which provide electromagnetic vibrations, the frequency of which can be changed by changing the values of electronic components, either the capacity of condenser or the inductance of coil. Ke condenser or inductance kya hai, ye tumhe higher classes mein samaj mein aega. But tumne dekha hoga tumhare radio mein uh, ya TV receiver mein kuch, uh, 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 kuch, you can say radio stations pata hai tumhe FM ke. कुछ certain frequency पे ही कुछ certain radio station चलते हैं तो वो particular frequency पे जब तुम तुम्हारे radio set को रखोगे तो it catches the signal how does it catch the signal now the components inside the radio set uh, they produce vibrations of certain frequency on which the uh, the radio set is set and these frequencies uh, produced in the electronic components of the radio set which you have matches with the frequencies of the radio signals which are already there in the air. So, this radio signal, which is radio transmission station, is produced from there. So, this radio transmission station, which signal is sending, and your radio ke electronic component ke jo signal is created, they match with each other, and for this reason, there is resonance between the two, and you are able to hear the data which is sent by the radio station. That means, you hear channel clearly. मतलब रेजोनेंस के हेल्प से तुम रेडियो और टीवी रिसीवर्स में एक आ, क्या बोलते हैं सिग्नल को रिसीव करते हैं ठीक है व्हेन बोथ द फ्रीक्वेंसीज मैच रेजोनेंस अकर्स एंड ओनली द एनर्जी ऑफ सिग्नल ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर फ्रीक्वेंसी इज रिसीव फ्रॉम द वेव्स प्रेजेंट इन स्पेस इन एयर लीविंग द सिग्नल्स ऑफ अदर फ्रीक्वेंसीज व्हिच डू नॉट मैच विद द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द रिसीवर सर्किट द सिग्नल रिसीव्ड इज देन एम्पलीफाइड इन द रिसीवर सेट Okay, so that is resonance in radio and TV receivers. So that was this part. I'm sure this is a big part for you. And uh, tomorrow is your exam. And how would you do this part? I wonder. But if you just listen to this, uh, uh, 
the lecture your your most of the doubts will be cleared regarding the concepts which are taught here वैसे भी कुछ न्यूमेरिकल्स या ऐसा कुछ है नहीं पूरा थियोरिटिकल पार्ट है सो आई एम श्योर दैट दिस वीडियो विल डेफिनेटली हेल्प यू जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट दिस वीडियो एंड आई एम गोइंग टू सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो दैट इज द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो बाय